a tear-shaped star. It's raining iron on a newly discovered exoplanet and launch on the Rosalind Franklin rover pushback to 2022. It's Tuesday, March 17, 2020. Let's talk some science. Across Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and YouTube, this is Talking Science with Dr. Brad Tucker and Matt Miller. Dr. Brad Tucker, happy coronavirus Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I'm really ready for New Year's and the Christmas shutdown already. <laughs> and it's March. It's, it, we haven't even gone. Oh, we're over the halfway point of March. It's uh, no. 2020's testing us. Yeah, look, it's pushing us to the brink. And look, we had an extra day this year as well. Of all the crappy years to have an extra <laughs> year day, it's 2020. Yeah, just one thing after another. Uh, especially for Australia, I don't think it's necessarily been too bad for the rest of the world. Uh, although coronavirus is sort of COVID nineteen has sort of been around yeah. for the year, but for for us here in Australia, it's just it's uh, one thing after another. Yes, ad, yes, absolutely insane. And uh, and you were saying off air as well that you guys are, are reacting to the situation with uh, over two hundred events cancelled. That's right. So we are there's no events happening essentially uh, at Mount Shrumlow and ANU at least until end of June. Um, so all of my events, other places and events here are canceled to prevent large gatherings. From Monday, pretty much all the cultural attractions and museums in Canberra will shut. Parliament House will be reduced staff, even for like the politicians. They're only allowed a certain amount of people here. So, you know, it's definitely something people are taking serious. You know, and on a personal note, uh, my wife's an emergency doctor, so she knows she's not going to have a life for the next three months. Yes, of course. They've already been told, you know, you won't have a life for the next three months because <laughs> they're going to get sick and then, you know, it, they'll be overwhelmed. And so it's, you know, as when we talk science, it's, it's in the truest sense, there's a reason people are taking these precautions. We know what happens. We've done these experiments. You can look at the data and you clearly know what to do and what you shouldn't do. Uh, and, you know, it's not being... Yeah. Uh, hysterical, maybe the TP issue, toilet paper issue is a different story, but preventing mass gatherings <laughs> does help. You know, you you don't randomly get a thousand extra hospital beds and doctors to help you out of nowhere, and then people still normally get sick. Yes. Right. Aside from this, so, it's still the normal the normal sickness to, to yeah, deal with. Yeah, people will need well. surgeries and they'll have car accidents and allergic reactions. All that stuff still doesn't stop because mm. of coronavirus. <laughs> Talking Science, Stories of the Week. All right, well, the reason we're here is not because of coronavirus, but uh, for us. Well, look, we, we are definitely have a 2,000 kilometre <laughs> buffer between us, so we are following the medical advice. This is very true. And this is the advantage of podcasting from the home studio. Uh, the show can go on as much as it, as much as it needs to. Yes. Uh, and uh, amateur astronomers have discovered a teardrop-shaped half-pulsating star. This is pretty cool. It is. So this was found using TESS, so the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, the, the replacement Kepler Space Telescope. And the goal is to find planets around other stars, but it also, be, by finding planets around other stars, it sees weird stars, weird behavior stars. Uh, and what they saw was essentially pulsing star quakes, but instead of it happening evenly, so if you think of our sun, we get eruptions all across the surface, it's only happening on one hemisphere, the hemisphere pointed to another object, um, which means that the star itself is actually quite distorted and disfigured, for lack of a better term. Scientists have identified molten iron rain on this exoplanet that we teased last week. Yeah, WASP-76b. The uh, The announcement came out, as we said, as we highlighted that it was going to come out. And this temperature, let's just say you are glad, glad when it's a drought. <laughs> you do not want rain on this planet. So... This planet, it's been detected to have iron in its atmosphere. Now, the way you get this is the daytime temperatures of WASP-76b are 2,400 degrees Celsius, hot enough to actually break iron into the individual atoms. But the planet has a wind system and it blows the iron around just as we do here on Earth. And as it goes into the nighttime, the nighttime being a, a balmy 1,500 degrees Celsius, <laughs> <laughs> it solidifies. And when iron solidifies in the air, it falls to the ground. It rains iron. Like, well, you wow. cannot, I can't even imagine raining iron. All right, well, our last uh, story of the week. Uh, the ExoMars Rosalind Franklin rover has been delayed to 2022 to, for launch 
until 2022. But coronavirus isn't just the only reason. No, that's right. So, I mean, coronavirus actually does come into play. Uh, but look, you know, we talked about, you know, uh, Perseverance being named last week. And the Rosalind Franklin rover was getting slightly behind. They were, they did the testing and assembling late last year, as we talked about. They just ran into dead, the delays and deadlines, and and this was doing the proper testing and assembly and all that little stuff that you need to make sure works before you send a rover 450 million kilometers away. The small details, um, you know. Yeah, and that it, it was getting to the crunch time, and they quickly realized that they were not going to make it, and then. On top of everything, there is now travel restrictions in Europe, so you can't travel around to go and do the final testing. So coronavirus here wasn't the problem. It was the icing on the the catastrophic cake. <laughs> Fantastic, Brad. Well, it's been fun to pick apart the uh, stories of the week in science and space. Uh, I believe that uh, you've got another full day of uh, working out how to do things uh, socially distant from other things. Yes. Uh, just make sure you bring some disinfectant wipes to the telescope eyepiece, okay? Oh, we, we are well stocked up, trust us. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, Brad. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good.